Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about the energy profile diagrams, how to determine the intermediates, the catalyst, the energies of activation, and your transition states. It's extremely important to understand these uh, terms and be able to identify those in a given reaction when you are provided the elementary steps. And it's not only important in GenCam, but it also plays an important role understanding some parts of organic chemistry as well. So let's look at this first uh, question here where I'm given two elementary steps, and then I will have another one where you will be given only one elementary step. And you want to know, you want to make sure you know the difference between the energy profile diagrams of uh, the two elementary step reaction and a one elementary step reaction and once you understand those you can figure out the three elementary steps and four elementary steps and so on. So suppose I have this reaction uh, steps here where A and B reacts to make an AB and this step is considered to be the slow step and this doesn't nest does not have to be the slow step I just made that a slow step but you could also have your second step or even the third step to be the slow step as well and then in the second step you have this AB reacting with C and making it an AC and B again so before we do anything make sure you are able to write a overall reaction and when you're writing the overall reaction, just figure out what common variables, what common things you got on both sides. So another way of saying, I have AB on both sides. So I got one AB here, another AB here. So that would cancel out. In addition to that, I got a B right there and a B right there. They are also in the reactant and the product side. So they would cancel out and we will determine whether they're going to be the catalyst or intermediates in a little bit. But before, let's just go ahead and write down what's left behind. So we got on the reactant side would be A and on the other uh, reactant I have is a C and that goes on to make AC so that's going to be your overall reaction and now let's figure out what's AB going to be and what's B going to be so if you use something usually in the first step and then you produce that at the end of the day or you produce that back at the last step that particular chemical would be considered as a catalyst like in this particular case the B it's getting used but then it's getting produced at the end of the day as well so that's actually going to be your catalyst so make sure you're able to identify your catalyst and then what's happening to the AB? Well, AB get produced in one of the steps, but it, then it get used right away in the next step. So if you produce something and then it get used right away, that's going to be your intermediate. Know the difference between your intermediate and your catalyst. Now, since you have two steps in this particular um, in this particular reactions we're gonna have two energy we're gonna have two energy barriers when you draw the energy profile diagrams we're gonna let's suppose I'm starting it right here where I have a plus B so that's going to be your first step and then I'm going to be making a uh, intermediate here so that's going to be your intermediate right at this point which is going to be your a B and then after that I will have another step so for the other step you'll have another energy barrier uh, before you make the product so this is where you're gonna have your product made at the end of the day so this is gonna be your AB or you can say AC plus B you can write down and obviously your B would cancel out so you would have only the AC so because remember their AB does get to react with the C in the second step to make those AC plus B. Now the difference in the energy barriers going to be will have two steps so in the first step your energy of activation is going to be very high. That's going to be EA1 let's call that and in the second step we'll have an EA2 and we can clearly see here your EA1 
is actually going to be bigger than EA2, and that's going to be the case if your first step is indeed the rate determining step or your slower step. If your second step was the slower step, then you would have to rearrange your diagrams so that your EA2 comes out to be bigger in energy than the EA1. Now, in addition to that, the highest points you have in those energy barriers, like for example this one right there, we're going to call that transition state 1. And another highest point we have uh, for the second step is going to be your transition state 2. So if you're doing two steps, you will have two transition states and one intermediate like we can see in this particular case. And then finally, you would, uh, how would you find the energy of the reaction? Well, the energy of the reaction is just going to be the difference between the energies of your reactants and the products. So that could be like delta H of the reaction or the delta G of the reaction, depending on what energy variable you have on the y-axis. So that's going to be your overall energy profile diagram. So as a refresher, make sure you can figure out where your transition states are, make sure you can figure out where your intermediates are, and then make sure you know how, to, how you're going to be drawing these energy profile barriers depending on the activation energy. Let's look at an energy profile diagram if your elementary, if you have only one elementary step. Well, if you have only one elementary step, then you're going to have only one energy barrier. You're not going to have two like we just saw in the previous case. And I can probably just take this example and I can just say I have A and C reacting together to make an AC in one elementary step, okay? And there's really not there's no catalyst being used and since there's no catalyst being used in there you will have this reaction probably slow to react but you will have this being taking place in only one step so what i'm going to have at the end of the day here i'll start out with my reactants where you have a plus c here and then your product would look like this so your product is going to be right here, so that you're making an AC. So you have only one energy barrier there, and there is only going to be one activation energy. And uh, that's going to be your... That's going to be the activation energy for this first step. And in addition to that, your transition state is also going to be one, only one transition state, and no intermediates formed. No catalyst being used here, no intermediates being formed here either. And uh, you can clearly see if I want to look at the difference between the two elementary steps and one elementary steps, in two elementary steps you got one intermediate, two transition states, two activation energies. In one elementary step we're going to have one transition state, one activation energy, no intermediate. What if you have three steps, just as in a side note here. So if you have a reaction that has three elementary steps, how many energy barriers you're going to have? So you're going to have three energy barriers, like three up and down hills, kind of. And then how many transition states you're going to have? Well, you're going to have t three transition states. And then you will have three activation energies. And obviously, one of the activation energies will be bigger, depending on which particular elementary step is indeed the slowest step. And then how many intermediates you're going to have? Well, you're going to have only two intermediates. So your intermediates is always going to be one less than how many steps you have. So if you have only one step, then there is no intermediate for that particular reaction. This is how you're going to be figuring out the energy profile diagrams, the intermediates, the catalyst, and the transition states. If you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.